So guys, TK back with another video. Today I'm going to go over the new battle mechanic known as terrestrializing. I think that's how you say it. That will be in Scarlet and Violet. I'm going to cover as much as I can that is currently known about the mechanic because the game ain't out. So, um, so I'm only going to go over what was shown so far by official sources. And since the games are not out yet, I can't fully understand all the ins and out of the mechanics. But I thought it would be fun to discuss everything I understand so far and how it will affect competitive play. So without further ado, according to the Pokemon website, the terrestrial phenomenon is found only in the Paldea region. It makes Pokemon shine and glimmer like gems. When a Pokemon terrestrializes, a Terra Jewel appears above the Pokemon's head like a crown. And the Pokemon, the Pokemon's body glistens like a cut gemstone. Had they y'all with the official lore from the Pokemon website there. I think the crowns are goofy. I really like the the like the, the aura, like the crystal mechanic. Uh, but to me, the the crowns can go. But I understand. I guess they want to make it so you can like people can see the typing better. Um, so I understand from that standpoint. But I think they look a little goofy. But uh, let's proceed. Again, according to the Pokemon website. All Pokemon in Paldea can terrestrialize to gain special power. First, each Pokemon has a Terra type. A Pokemon's Terra type is inactive until the Pokemon terrestrializes, at which time the Pokemon type will change to its Terra type. So, since there are 18 types, every Pokemon can turn into each of the 18 types, which means countless combinations. That sounds like chaos. It also says that you can terrestrialize a Pokemon once per battle. Then the transformation will last until the battle ends. Huh. Does that mean you would switch out and the effect is still there, like Mega Evolution? Like, I'm not I'm not sure about that. Cause I mean, what I thought was you it's like Dynamax, you switch and it's doing it's going. But according to the website, it says it lasts till the end of battle. So we'll see. So yeah, when I read this, I get a little excited because like I don't know. I get excited, but I also get scared, a little scared <laughs> at the same time. Because this means, this seems like it's going to be used as a surprise factor most of the time. Um, and I'm already thinking of defensive strategies using this mechanic in competitive. Like, uh, like for example, just the, it, I know everybody's talking about like Shedinja, but like you can also do things like this. You can have a strong physical attacker on the field and you can read your opponent to try to cripple it with a Will-O-Wisp, right? To burn it so you can, you know, cut their attack in half. But you can know this and you can terrestrialize that strong physical attacker into, let's say, a fire type. <laughs> Therefore, you're immune to the burn, right? So the opponent just wastes a turn of trying to burn you and you become a fire type, which means you can't get burned. Um, so that sounds interesting, right? That's just that's just one way that I think you could utilize it. But it's crazy. I, I there's so many strategies that come to mind offensively and defensively. That's why I say it's a little it's gonna be it's a little crazy. I don't, I don't know. It seems kind of like a surprise factor. Um, but I don't know if using the mechanic in that situation is the best way to utilize it. I just was throwing that out for as an example. But from what I've seen so far, it's going to work like Dynamax um, in battle where you don't need an item to activate it. And just like Dynamax, I think where the skill comes in is you need to understand when the best time during the battle um, to utilize it. Otherwise, it's wasted. Your opponent can take advantage of that wasted mechanic. So like, yeah, um, the thing about Dynamax is you don't want to just want to Dynamax straight up. You want to you want to understand what's the best situation of Dynamax, because let's say you Dynamax first turn and then your opponent, like, like in that example, Will-O-Wisp you and you're a physical attacker well now you can't snowball because you only got three turns of dynamax right so sometimes you need to read the situation look at the position on the board and then figure out if it's if it's a good time to dynamax because dynamax only lasts three turns and you only get you know you only got so much time before your and your opponent gets it too so you gotta you gotta make sure you understand when's the best time to use it um but from what i've seen so far um from this terrestrialized mechanic i don't think it will be as snowbally as dynamax was but the surprise factor of the mechanic, I think, is going to be like where this mechanic shines the most, honestly. Whether you use it offensively or defensively, I think will depend on the board positioning, like I was saying, um, I suppose. <laughs> Either way, I'm super excited to see the chaos, because I think this mechanic is going to be chaos when the game first, came out, first comes out. Um, I'm super excited to see the chaos this mechanic creates when the game comes out and, uh, <laughs> and players start team building to figure out how to use it. It's going to be a good time, to be honest. I I'm excited for that. Um, another thing is, since each Pokemon can terrestrialize into any type, I was thinking you're probably going to want to catch multiple of the same Pokemon um, for different Terra types, for different team building strategies. So I, I, I guess raiding in this game is going to be super important. 
since each Pokemon can only have one Terra type. Uh, Radiant, Radiant and Sword and Shield was important too. Um, at the start, I remember, I remember I was rating a lot, but I think it, I think rating in Scarlet and Violet is going to be even more important because I mean you got 18 types and each Pokemon can have every type, so I don't know. It's just something to think about. Um, and yeah, the last thing really, I, I, it goes back to the hats. I really don't like the hats, <laughs> to be honest. Like I said, I understand that they might be needed to help people see uh, what type the Pokemon becomes, but they just look so goofy to me. Uh, but I love the aura crystal effect. I love the I love all the other effects. I, I kind of, from what I understand, the mechanic seems fun. It's gonna be very scary, like a surprise factor. The only thing I don't like so far is the hats. I really I'm not feeling the hats, but yeah, whatever. It's not that big of a deal to be honest. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make or break the game for me. It's just I wish they were I wish they weren't there. But I understand why they're there. But yeah, that's all I really have today covering this new uh, mechanic. I'm super excited to try it out when the game comes out, and can't wait to see how the meta develops around it. Uh, let me know how you guys feel about was terrestrializing, terrestrial phenomenon, whatever they want to call it. Uh, let me know how y'all feel in the comments below. And if you like the video, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.